Hello, my name is David Marler from Rotterdam University, and I'm going to be talking today about glottal reinforcement. Today we're going to be talking about what a glottal stop is, what glottal reinforcement is, and when you can use it. Now, a glottal symbol, as you can see here, looks like a question mark without the dot at the bottom. And the noise is quite easy to make. We make it all the time, and it's one of the first noises that we learn when we're children. So when a kid makes a mistake, the thing that they say is, uh-oh. And glottal reinforcement is the closing of the air in the throat and then a release of the air from the throat from the same place that we make the H noise, the So let's look at a few words to see whether or not we have glottal reinforcement or glottal stops. So we're going to start with the word atomic. And atomic is spelt as follow or transcribed as follow in IPA. Here we can see that the t noise in atomic is on a stressed syllable. The same thing when we look at transcribe. The t is now not on the stressed syllable because the stress is on scribe, but it is on the first noise in the word. These are what we would like to call normal T noises. So if we listen to the noise itself, like atomic and transcribe, we can hear a burst of air following the T noise. When a T is part of the stress syllable, or it's the first noise in a word, it never has glottal reinforcement. So there are two different types of us using the glottal noise. The first one is glottal replacement. And we can, look at, we can hear this when we look at two sentences that are very common in American English and most British and Irish accents. For instance, the word, I can help you. We look at it here, and when we transcribe it, it looks like that. If I have, I can't eat now, we can now see that we have glottal replacement. Because I don't say, I can't eat now. I say, I can't eat now. So when you hear the difference between someone who says, for instance, I can help you and I can't help you, you'll actually, if you listen to the way that I say the second sentence, I can't help you or I can't eat now, you're not going to hear me saying or pronouncing the T noise. And then when we transcribe this, we would then transcribe this with the glottal replacement. And in this case, because the T is not being spoken, it's not being pronounced, we call this replacement. It is not the same thing as reinforcement, which we'll discuss in a minute. So I can't eat now, and you can see here that I have it in between slashes and not brackets, because the slash is the way that we teach people to say it, whereas in between the brackets, as in the first sentence, that's how I actually say it. And this is how the T works in different accents. So in American English, at the end of a word, we often use glottal uh, replacement. But in the middle of words, it can look different. So let's look at the word letter, for instance. In most British accents, it's going to be pronounced letter. And the T is not pronounced, so it is being completely re replaced by a glottal noise or a glottal stop. In American English, though, this changes because the T in the middle of words often becomes a D. So letter in British becomes letter, and in American it becomes letter. The same thing happens with, for instance, bottle. It becomes bottle in RP, or in uh, most British accents, and in American it becomes bottle. This also happens with noises like water. In British, it becomes water, and in American, it becomes water. So on the phonetics one test, you will not have to transcribe the glottal stop because this is not a characteristic of received pronunciation. It is, however, though, a common feature of English in most English American Canadian accents. What you will have to know is what we call glottal reinforcement. So if we look at the word letter, when we actually transcribe that word, you would have to know that we would say letta. So letta, but the glottal noise that comes in is actually placed right before the T. So if we look at the word bottle, it becomes bottle. 
And if we look at the word water, it becomes water. So if we look at glottal reinforcement in larger sentences, like the one that we looked at earlier, I can help you and I can't eat now. This is how you would have to transcribe these sentences, or you would have to recognize where glottal reinforcement takes place in the sentence. So if we look at the rules that we learned earlier, we can now practice when and when we don't have glottal reinforcement. So in this activity, what I want you to do is write down the following transcriptions. So you're going to underline the T noises that get glottal reinforcement. So for instance, our first sentence is get it together. The second sentence is let her talk to Tommy. And the third sentence is Trump attempted to talk about atomic weapons. Now what I want you to do is on your own sheet of paper, write down the transcriptions of these sentences and then pause this tape. You now need to underline the T noises that will get glottal reinforcement. Remember, these are not noises that are at the first T, so the first T in a noise, and they're also not the T noises that are on stressed syllables. Pause it now, and in one second we'll talk about the answers. So if we look at the answers to this activity, we can see the following. If we look at the sentence, get it together, the T in get, the T in it, do get glottal reinforcement because they are not starting a stressed syllable and they are not starting a word. If we look at the second sentence, let her talk to Tommy, the let gets glottal reinforcement, the talk does not, the to does not, and Tommy do not because those words all start out words with the letter T. The next sentence is Trump, Trump attempted to talk about atomic weapons. If we look at this, Trump and attempted to and talk do not get glottal reinforcement. But if we look at the word about, then we will. And you can feel it in your throat that your throat closes that. So when we say Trump attempted to talk about atomic weapons, you can hear at the end that your throat closes up. And that is the definition of glottal reinforcement.